Well, good morning to you all. Let me, let me just say, it is such a pleasure to see so many people at this summit. There was a time when I thought that we would have two or three tables, okay? To see so many people here committed to this work is really quite thrilling, and I think it is a sign of the times. And I take great pleasure in having rescued Lisa Felt from EPA just in the nick of time, ladies and gentlemen, okay? And we are so much better for her leadership in our county as head of DEP. I take, uh, I also want to return to a line that she said that now is more important than ever for local governments to take the lead when it comes to climate change, ladies and gentlemen. We see what's happening at the federal level. We see the rollback of things that many of us have worked 30, 40 years to try and bring about. And so it is very painful for those of us that care deeply about the planet's existence. Okay, this is an existential threat, ladies and gentlemen. You are here because you know that. But it is so true that what we are dealing with now at the federal level represents a threat to our planet's existence. And so what we can and must do at the local level is everything we can do at the local level. And I'm pleased to say that we actually can do a lot. And I'm even more pleased to say that in Montgomery County, we are among the most sustainable communities in the United States of America. Thank you very much, and you should take pride in that, okay? It is something that, yeah, that's an applause line. That's, a, that's an applause line. Our county, and I worked on Capitol Hill once upon a time when I was a younger man and had the privilege of working for Congressman Henry Waxman arguably the greatest environmentalist ever to serve in the United States Congress. So I come at this work deeply committed to doing everything I can do as a leader of our county to ensure that we adopt the best policies possible. And generally on Earth Day, I have in the past introduced 12 bills on the environment. And my colleagues go, it's Earth Day, okay, Roger, what are you gonna have for us? And fortunately we've done a fair amount of good work. We are the first county in the United States of America to have a green bank, ladies and gentlemen. The first county in the United States of America. We are among the first counties, in the, we were the first county in the United States to adopt a benchmarking law. We were the first county in the United States, in Maryland, to adopt a residential PACE program, a commercial PACE program. We passed legislation to ensure that there are EV capacity at every major parking facility that is created in our commercial sector. If it's over X number of parking spaces, it has to have the capacity to take care of electric vehicles. We are doing everything we know how to achieve what a document that I signed among my first weeks as joining the county council, which was the Cool County Pledge to reduce our emissions by 80% by 2050. And we said to ourselves, this cannot be just talk. This has to be something that we actually walk the walk and do it. And so I am very hopeful that the benchmarking law, which in the beginning was somewhat controversial, in part because I introduced the model that New York City and had uh, pushed through, and, and that model actually not only required that we measure our energy consumption, but that you had a requirement to actually go in and fix it after X number of years. And that was a bridge too far for our community at this moment in time, and we also thought that if we had that coupled with a commercial PACE program, that the private sector market would come forward and say, okay, this building is using so much energy. And guess what? I know how to fix that. I can make money on that, and you can reduce your energy consumption and your contribution to greenhouse gas emissions. Let's see. You can make more money, and you can do right by the planet. That is our mantra, ladies and gentlemen, that you can make money and do right by our planet. And so that's the work of the Commercial PACE program. That's the work of why the, the benchmarking is so 
an important element of that because it makes the energy consumption public, all right? All the people out here that do this great work are able to see that if you have a building that's wasting energy, that they can come in with their products and make it so much better. Our green bank is, and my, my hope with respect to our green bank, and it was something that we've worked on very hard. And again, one of the wonders of working and living in Montgomery County is that you have national leaders like Reed Hunt, who literally formed the coalition for, I apologize, somebody yell it out from the coalition. Green Capital, thank you. Uh, coalition for Green Capital. He started that organization and, and brought it to Connecticut, which had one of the first green banks in New York. They have a green bank. And he, he said, Roger, and he took it to Chris Van Hollen, who of course introduced it in Congress. Thank you very much, Senator Chris Van Hollen's office. And he brought it to me and he said, Roger, we could do this in Montgomery County. And I said, yeah, we can do this in Montgomery County. So we are so blessed to have people that are national leaders who bring their great ideas to us. And I ask you in that same way, bring me, bring us your good ideas. How can we do this work better? This is a partnership of like-minded people that are trying very hard to make sure that we are the greenest place we can possibly be. So we're working on a green bank, which I hope will help us get into the multifamily sector, the low income multifamily sector, because that's been a hard sector to reach. The residential market proved to be a much harder reach than I thought when I introduced and we passed the residential PACE program. This was something that was happening throughout the country. And what I, what I quickly learned was the power of the T word, trillion dollars. And that is what Freddie and Fannie Mae and our, our federal financing authorities control when it comes to the mortgage industry. And the mortgage banking industry, they weren't real pleased with the residential PACE program that actually put the loan for residential retrofit ahead of the mortgage. For some reason, they, they didn't like that. <laughs> and, you know, there's some fights that you end up not winning. And uh, the mortgage banking industry is one of those players that when you go up against them, they win in Congress and they win in Annapolis. And we tried real hard, actually, to pass legislation that would have allowed our residential PACE program to take second place, second place to the mortgage. And we still couldn't get the mortgage bankers to agree, and we still couldn't get Annapolis to move it. So now we need to use our green bank mechanism to come up with creative financing ways in which we can make this deep dive into the residential sector, because you're absolutely right. New buildings is a piece, and we need to get the new buildings right. But it is our existing infrastructure that we need to get in into in a serious way. And our residential sector is one of the hardest. But you look out in California, you look out in other places, billion dollars worth of transactions are taking place throughout the country on residential PACE programs. And so we, if we can crack this nut, and I'm hoping that our Green Bank can, it provides that wedge financing that makes things happen that would otherwise not happen. And that's what we're trying to do, make things happen that would not otherwise happen. We're also going to be looking at new building codes. That's coming before us, and it's actually been sent to us, and we have to get our arms around the International Green Construction Code and its applicability. We now have programs in Montgomery County where you are required to make LEED certification, and LEED has been a terrific asset in our, in our county and in our communities. But now people are saying, well, do we do LEED or we do International Green Construction Code? We have tax credits now for both silver and gold. Our gold lead tax credit pot of money is oversubscribed, and our silver lead is undersubscribed. So we need to look at our tax credits and say, are we doing this right? Should we change this in any way? And should we increase the standards? So in our downtown Bethesda plan, okay, in our land use plans, we are looking at this issue, and our planners have said to us, in the core of downtown Bethesda, every building ought to be 15% higher than whatever you are requiring as a matter of regulation, so that we have a sustainable downtown Bethesda that really is quite remarkable in that way. 
So ladies and gentlemen, I come to you to say thank you for being here. Thank you for everything you are doing to make sure that we take advantage of every opportunity to be the most sustainable major county in the United States of America. I welcome your partnership and thank you for being here.